That's drunk. The Addams Family started out as a satirical comic strip way back in the 1930s before it became a hit TV series in 1964. It got the dreaded reboot in 1991 with a feature film. It turned out though that the movie was actually funny and still holds up well today. It spawned a sequel, Addams Family Values, and a Saturday morning animated series. Each of these projects produced a Super Nintendo game, each developed by Ocean Software. We start with The Addams Family, released in 1992, where the family's lawyer has taken control of the Addams household and it's up to Gomez to run around each room of the mansion and free all the different family members. For the gameplay, uh, yep, it's a platformer. It's the platformiest platformer ever to platform on a platform in platform land. You run around, jump on enemies to kill them, collect money, occasionally you get a projectile, eventually you get a sword, there's a fez you can wear that has you fly temporarily. It's honestly hard to come up with anything to say about the gameplay here because it's pretty bland. It's not bad at all, it's just that nothing really stands out as unique from other games. The hit detection is not forgiving either, so there's plenty of instances where you jump on an enemy and you end up taking damage instead. So this game is pretty hard. The enemy patterns here too can be maddening. I will give the Adams Family credit for having some hidden areas to explore and for providing an open edit format for the player to approach the game in different ways. It's just the gameplay itself is so bland and the difficulty doesn't help either. So yeah, the first Adam's Family game isn't bad, but it isn't worth going out of your way to play. If you want a basic platformer, there's always stuff like Plock or Artie Lightfoot or, you know, Kirby or Mario or Donkey Kong Country or a million other platformers. Things get a little better with the Addams Family Pugsley's Scavenger Hunt. This game is based off the cartoon series, so the visual style reflects that, and it looks great. Again, this is a platformer like the first game, and it's structured in a similar way, where you start out in this room, and you can pick whatever level you want to play. The big problem with Pugsley's Scavenger Hunt, as you'll find out right away, is that this game is ridiculously hard. I mean, like, borderline impossible. You know how in games like Sparkster, or Twin Bee Rainbow Bell Adventure, or Sky Blazer, you're overpowered to the gills, with all sorts of methods to destroy enemies and avoid obstacles. This game is the opposite. Stuff is flying around everywhere and all of it can kill you, and you can only jump on enemies or use this pathetic kick that hardly works. Even in the stage select area, you've got these burlap sacks trying to kill you. Come on, man! Another annoying thing is this screeching sound that happens every time you change direction. That really gets old quick. <laughs> Pugsley Scavenger Hunt does have its strengths, the graphics and music stand out really well, and there's some clever puzzles here too. But this game is just way too hard to get into, especially with no way to save and no passwords. Screw that. Last, there's Adam's Family Values, based of course on the Adam's Family movie sequel. This time around, it's a top-down adventure style game. You play as Uncle Fester, and yeah, I can probably guess that some of you have some repressed trauma from Fester's quest on NES that's bubbling to the surface right now, but thankfully this game is much better than that. Fester has to find baby Pubert, who was kidnapped, and you get plenty of help from other family members who give you clues and items throughout the game. In addition to the usual adventure style gameplay here, there's some RPG-ish elements as well, like being able to upgrade your attack and your equipment and you level up, so to speak, by being able to take more damage as you progress through the game. The more damage you take, the weaker and shorter your lightning attack is, so you can't just hack and slash your way through the game. The problem with this game, again, is that there's no battery save, only passwords, and the only way to get a password is to find Cousin It, and you usually have to backtrack to a certain area to find him. It's pretty annoying. Overall, though, Adam's Family Values is a pretty good game. The best of the three Adam's Family games. It's not the most intuitive, as it can be tough to determine where you're supposed to go, or where you can go, or what you're supposed to do, but between the top-down action and the puzzle solving and the very good soundtrack, this game has quite a bit to offer. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.